Success. The first goal of our expedition was to gain as much government support in Managua as possible. Meetings with the ministers of health and of fisheries were crucial. We received letters of support and permission to borrow a 33-foot boat, which our mission required. We also recovered our emergency hyperbaric chamber, which the previous government had confiscated. The pier at Puerto Cabezas. Work crews are still repairing the solid mahogany pier from hurricane damage suffered over a year ago. The lobster boat fishing fleet, merchant ships, and pongas, which are 25-foot sailboats, tie up here. Only the south side of the pier is used due to prevailing winds and a large crane that fell off the north side, blocking ships from mooring. Doctors Jankowski and Youngblood examining the lobster fleet. Dr. Youngblood's efforts were key to our success in Managua. Dr. Jankowski conducted hyperbaric medical training and brought a Doppler listening device. This device enables one to hear bubbles in the bloodstream, which can cause the bends. The Doppler device allows a quantitative assessment of the bubbles. This information is used to check progress during decompression treatments. A lobster boat. Notice the racks of scuba bottles in tiers of canoes. Up to 35 diver tender teams go out on these boats, 80 to 100 miles at sea. The boat acts as the mothership, providing fresh scuba bottles to the canoes, which in turn spread out for miles in the hunt for lobster. The divers use 12 to 16 bottles of air per day and go as deep as 140 feet. No dive tables. No decompression. Just the bends. The port captain of Puerto Cabezas revealing proposed legislation for the lobster diving industry. This occurred at a meeting the team organized with the local officials in Puerto Cabezas. Despite positive events such as this, challenges like enforcement of legislation remain. The Nicaraguan government does not have a Coast Guard or any kind of naval presence on the Mosquito Coast. Dr. Tom Millington conducting a class on hyperbaric medicine for the doctors and nurses of the government medical clinic. The hyperbaric chamber transported for subocean safety by the Mercy Ships organization is at their clinic. One doctor who works at the clinic part-time reported to us that he treated 700 divers in the past year at his private clinic. He only treats their pain though since he has no equipment or training in hyperbarics. The divers are told by the industry to use the private clinic in an attempt to cover up the problem. The subocean safety team and a group of mosquito Indian divers pushing the hyperbaric chamber along on rollers to a temporary location where it can be used. Several thousand dollars are required to build a proper facility for the chamber and its support equipment. This facility would also be used as a classroom with hands-on hyperbaric training. The rebuild of the air compressor for the chamber ran into problems. Here Robert Izdebski is applying heat to a seized bearing in an effort to remove it. The component would eventually have to be shipped to Managua for repairs. One of the boat owners who helps Subocean Safety, Eduardo Goff, made this possible. The Chamber in its Temporary Use Position If a chamber had been here six years before, the man in the wheelchair, Hans, would probably be walking. He has some feeling and movement in his legs, which indicates that early treatment could have helped him walk again. Venting the hyperbaric chamber during its first pressure test. After almost two weeks of hard work, the chamber was made operational. The team overcame missing pieces, broken components, electrical sparks, and a local hardware store with very few parts. Our engineer, David Rossi, on the left, 
was the key man in this phase.